We're talking about eating super healthy, but not for a lot of money here on the Exam Room Podcast, brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Hi, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. I am so thrilled to be joined by my guest today, who has a brand new book coming out called Plant Based on a Budget, Quick and Easy, two of my favorite things. She is a rock star of all rock stars. We welcome Tony Okamoto to the show. Thank you so much for being here, Tony. Thank you so much, Chuck, for having me. I am really excited about our call today. Me too, me too. And you know, when I was looking at your book and I hopped over on Amazon, I said, all right, well, what is this thing all about? Is it as the title says? And yeah, because here's here's the slug right there when you go to Amazon. When we're crunched for time, cooking something healthy and tasty often falls off our to-do lists. But with a little planning and some smart recipes, eating well can fit into even the busiest of lifestyles. So that's what we're talking about today. Super pumped about that. And really nothing could be more true there. I mean, it just seems like we're all trying to squeeze 27 hours into a 24 hour day. And the first thing that gets cut is the time in the kitchen. How in the world, Tony, can we really fit kitchen time into that 27 slash 24 hour day? I have struggled with this on and off my whole career. I've been running plant-based on a budget for 11 years. And actually, can I tell a quick story? Absolutely. Okay. So I feel like I'm coming full circle because when I started plant-based on a budget 11 years ago and Facebook was the primary social media platform, the very first day I launched my blog, PCRM posted about a promising new resource online and linked plant-based on a budget and it got me my first followers and my first views and so i feel so honored to be here today and very very excited get out of town yes. that is awesome i had no idea yeah. that's so cool yes uh but to answer your question i have been doing this now for 11 years full time uh, with with my heart full time. Uh, and I've been doing it since 2016 with my time full time. And I have come to the conclusion that you have to really assess whether you have more time or more money. And when I first started, I was cooking my beans from scratch. I was doing everything from scratch because I didn't have any money. I was very much negative money. Uh, but now I find myself very strapped for time. And some ways I've done that are changing my perspective on things like canned beans and canned marinara sauce or, or jarred marinara sauce and looking for quick fixes in the kitchen that are delicious, nourishing, healthy, comforting, and affordable and accessible and quick and easy. And so some of those things for me look like a burrito with a whole wheat tortilla, some brown rice that I meal prepped for the week, and uh, a can of low sodium or no sodium beans. You can do black beans. I prefer pinto. And you can put some salsa on it. And if you have it in your budget to throw an avocado, that's great too. Another option would be some marinara and pasta with some vegetables and tofu or beans. So there are a lot of things that you can whip up very quickly that are going to be filling and nourishing to you. I'm just going to rewind back to the beginning of the answer because I think what you said may have been one of the most truthful statements in the history of this show. And that is you have to determine whether you have more time or if you have more money. And then you make all of your decisions from there. That is very wise, my friend. I love the truth bomb you just dropped. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, secondly, dissecting the answer a little bit further. If you're making a burrito, absolutely. You got to go pinto all the way. I mean, it's a burrito, <laughs> right? I mean, black beans are great, but save them for another time. If it's a burrito, you got to go pinto, team pinto all the way, right? Yes, actually, I used to think, uh, so I'm a Mexican and Japanese. I grew up culturally Mexican and I had never really had black beans. I grew up eating pinto beans. I still prefer pinto beans, but I used to have this misconception that black beans were for some reason fancier and fancy people <laughs> ate black beans. <laughs> 
Oh, you fancy, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> Black beans are fa- that's that's the gourmet bean right there. Yep. Oh man, that is fantastic. Um, let's let's give some practical advice here, though, man, because one of the things that I love about your book and your blog and your Instagram and your everything is that you really give tips that anybody can take and start implementing them right away, including stocking things up in their pantry in an affordable way. So if you're giving advice and you say, these are the things that you got to have in your pantry, these are your must haves and they're affordable. What would be on that list? Brown rice, uh, pinto beans. I would do some pasta. You can choose. There are so many different types of pasta. My husband loves chickpea pasta. I like lentil pasta. Um, definitely have frozen produce. There are so many people who eat, um, who go to the grocery store with the intention of being really, really healthy that week, but then life gets in the way and they don't <laughs> get to their delicious beautiful produce and then it expires and it's sad and it's like you're throwing money in the garbage. So having some frozen produce on hand is a must for me. And again, there are so many different types you could do. You can do um, bell pepper mix or roasted corn, or you can just go straight up broccoli and cauliflower. So there are lots of different types. Uh, I keep that stocked. I also do different types of noodles. I know I mentioned pasta, but I'm talking about um, noodles that would go well in Asian dishes like udon or soba. And those will be great for throwing together a quick stir fry. Mm, yeah, man, let me tell you something. I turned my wife onto those soba noodles and she loves them so much. She's like, I don't care. Whenever you make spaghetti now, I want soba noodles. Throw the marinara on top of that. She is, <laughs> she is like, we're, we're team Pinto, you and I, she's team soba. Like that is her jam. It is, it is like a little, it's a fancy noodle that I'm going to steal your black bean line. It is a fancy noodle. Does she love them so much? I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Oh boy. You fit right in on this one. This is great. This is, this is man, this interview is long overdue. Um, you talk about stocking up on frozen food, right? And I would think as somebody who does spend a lot of time in the kitchen coming up with these incredible recipes, when you have frozen food, I mean, that kind of takes the whole got to eat in season thing off of the table. It makes it a little bit easier for you to have a wider culinary scope, doesn't it? Yes. And I will say I live in the Central Valley of California, and it is very easy for me to grow my own food here. I grow the majority of what we eat in the summer, but I still like to have my fr- my frozen produce on hand, especially in the winter, especially at times I know my life is about to get really busy, like right now. Uh, and then the other part about it that I appreciate is that I can buy frozen produce at Dollar Tree. I can buy it at Walmart. And the majority of my audience shops at those those types of stores, because um, if they live in the middle of the country or in a place that doesn't have access to a lot of fresh food, they're still getting the nutrients that they need from produce. That's really cool that you, you kind of, you're talking about, you know, the dollar store, you're talking about Walmart, places like that. The typical person, I don't think when they're thinking about a health food store or even a place where they can just buy healthy food, those aren't exactly the shops that you would think of primarily, right? So it's kind of cool that you're shattering stigma. Are the people, I would imagine like you're reaching that audience anyway, I would imagine a lot of them who had been going to these stores already are surprised themselves to be able to find these healthy foods on the cheap. I am surprised too. Well, I'm no longer surprised, but I was surprised too. I used to do some what I eat in a day videos going to Dollar Tree and showing um, if I have $10 for um, a few days of food, what can I buy that's going to feed me breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And you can buy brown rice, you can dry, buy dried beans, uh, you can buy soy milk, and a lot of other things at the Dollar Tree. It's very, very surprising. 
So you're talking about $10 for a few days. I mean, you're not talking about like a little mini micro breakfast, a little mini micro lunch, and then just no. a teeny tiny dinner. You're talking about like full meals here, right? Exactly. And what's really cool about uh, eating whole foods is that the food expands. So when you're buying a, a bag of Pinto beans, for example, uh, they're going to expand three times and that's going to stretch so far where you can put them in your pasta dish and you can make a burrito and a wrap and throw them on top of a salad. So you have a lot of options when you're going in that direction. Are you at a point now in your life where you've got like 50 pound bags of dry <laughs> beans and rice in your kitchen? I feel like you're calling me out right now because I'm not. It is I'm true. Not. It is true. I have um, very large bags of rice, beans, fl different flours. I am a professional cook, so I go through food very quickly. But I do encourage bulk purchasing. And it's so cool when you talk about bulk purchasing because you can buy as much or as little as you need. And that's another thing you have to determine when you're doing that initial assessment. I remember I had very little money and I didn't have money, the, the extra cash to buy things in large volumes. So I would do the opposite and go to the bulk bins and bring my measuring cups. And on the, downs, the downpour, I would bring my one cup for the one cup of rice that I needed that week for, for my meals <laughs> and only buy one cup. And I didn't have a lot of space. I didn't have that money. And I, that's how I used bulk bins at that time in my life. That's cool. Are you rolling up these days with a duffel bag and just like letting the pour, just <laughs> fill that thing all the way up? Yes. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of Costco. So that's uh, where I'm getting mine these days. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Golly, you know, your book couldn't be coming out at a better time with inflation just going through the roof. Everybody is pinching pennies, you know, making them stretch as far as they possibly can. I know one of the things that you like to talk about also is how to cut your grocery bill in half with three hacks. I mean, if you're able to take a grocery bill and lop 50% off of it, you are truly doing the Lord's work. Yes, I will always start with meal planning and using what you have. That is my number one thing. And uh, okay, actually, I have another number one thing. That could be tied at number one because I feel like the biggest thing about meal planning is the mindset shift that you have to make and understand the understanding of what your priorities are what you want for your future, whether that's your health or your wallet, and getting in a space to do the do the work and get a plan in place. So that mindset shift, uh, whether that means putting something back at the register and not caring what the people think, or um, not indulging in something that you really are craving, that's that's where I'll start. Then the meal planning, which I think go together. Uh, the meal planning part is assessing what you have in your pantry and freezer already and working from there. You don't want to have to go and buy all new groceries and then have all this extra leftover. Also with the meal plan, try to put together meals that complement each other and use the same ingredients so that you're not having to buy uh, pasta ingredients that don't go well with your stir fry and have entirely in ing different ingredients that um, are not going to be used fully. So when I do my meal plans and I have a bunch of them on plantbasedonabudget.com, I have free meal plans that show you how to eat for about $35 for the week. Uh, I put together four entrees that you will eat throughout the week for um, dinners and some lunches. I'll put together some big salads, some smoothies, some overnight oats, and that is going to take you the whole week for just $35. So uh, I don't know what your audience is currently spending, but I imagine it's going to be more than cutting it in half. I think that what you have done is just sent me into retirement a couple years early. So <laughs> God bless. Uh, I mean, th that's, that's cool. But 
I, kind of a tricky question here though, right? Um, we're reusing some of the same ingredients as much as possible. How then do you still ensure that you're getting what we like to call here on the exam room, a wide nutrient profile, you know, making sure you're eating the rainbow, getting everything you need. Well, that is a great question because the audience that I work with tends to be um, eating McDonald's for lunch and mm. maybe wanting to do a plant-based meal for dinner. Maybe their doctor just told them about plant-based living. I'm often the first step into plant-based eating and surprising fact, 65% of the audience that I have, uh, of my audience, which I have polled, eats meat still and is trying to eat less of it. They want to introduce more plants into their diet. So uh, largely doctors, documentaries, and money saving are the motivators for this lifestyle change. Uh, and then to answer your question, I always put... Um, a very basic recipe that has ingredients that are the most affordable. And then I have optional ingredients. In case you have a budget, you'll find all of these things that complement the meal. And not everyone has that, so I make sure to have it separately. But if you do have extra money, you can add in some extra cilantro, you can add in some extra avocado, you can add in all of these things to diversify the the produce that you're eating and enhance the meal. You know what? I love the fact that you you said that about your audience and you you put the reality on there because I think that you know there probably are quite a few people who listen to the exam room. I haven't done a poll quite like yours, but I think that there are more than you would suspect. Um, that still incorporate meat in their diet, or at the very least, uh, have a significant other whom they're living with, uh, who is still very much eating steak and hamburgers and McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, whatever the case may be. So I love the fact that you're kind of like real about that. And I think that that actually, because you don't take that elitist attitude toward eating a plant-based diet, it makes it more inviting to somebody who is trying to clean up their health. Like it's not this exclusive, prestigious, snobby kind of a club. It's the kind of place that everybody wants to hang out and everybody's welcome. That's got to be super important to you. It is. And my family is the primary motivator of Plant Based on a Budget and its genesis. It started because my family was suffering some very severe diet related issues like type 2 diabetes with amputations and my grandpa who helped raise me died uh, of comp complications in a triple bypass surgery and it my my 40 year old uncle had a heart attack and it was very severe but something that i heard all the time even though i was thriving on a plant-based diet was that it's too expensive they can't afford to go to Whole Foods or the natural foods co-op near our house. And it made me feel like if that's most people in my family, how many people in our country, in my community, uh, in my neighborhood feel the exact same way. So uh, it they stay at the front of mind. And I now talk to people on a daily basis. Uh, I have a million people coming on my website every month and I get to talk to them and understand the obstacles and they're very valid and I, I make them feel heard and seen because I feel like that's how change is made through those personal connections and by lack of judgment and uh, and not only that, but with care and understanding that despite those obstacles, we can still help them. Real talk here. How gratifying is it that you have so many people coming to you for help? And you are, you're helping them in tremendous ways when they don't think that what they're looking for is even attainable. You are actually bringing them to their goal. Like that has to be a remarkable feeling for you. You know, I, I even, I'm like getting a little bit, I'm welling up a little bit thinking about it because I feel like not only is, is it a change with one person, but often it's generational change. If you can change 
a parent's outlook on food and what they feed their families, likely those children will also adopt those lifestyle habits and get better and better for future generations. So it's such a beautiful thing and I don't take it lightly. No, I kind of feel the same way about this show. From time to time, I'll hear from a mother who will tell me like that their daughter started listening or watching to the exam room. And because of that, they went plant-based together. And you were talking about the diseases that were plaguing your family. Well, a lot of them had the same types of issues. And now we are, we're stopping that, right? So suddenly that family tree with the diseased roots will grow healthy into the future. And that is such a privilege. And it is truly an honor to be able to do this show and bring that information to people um, and do it kind of in a fun way. I mean, I get to talk to people like you and that's making such a tremendous difference for a lot of people. Like it, it's just, it's the coolest. I'm going to try not to cry myself, but I got your feeling. That's all I'm trying to say here. That's yeah, all I'm trying and, to say. And thank you so much for the work that you do. It is so inspiring. And I am just so grateful to be talking to you about these things. Well, let's continue to do some good work. Tony, what do you say? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So we were talking about inflation. And one of the foods right now that is just prices are out of control and you're even having a hard time finding it in stores is eggs. So if somebody really enjoys eggs, but they've got the health concerns now and they're saying, well, the cost just isn't worth it anyway, what are some on the budget type of alternatives that you might recommend? If you really want to try to replicate the experience, you can do things like tofu scramble. That's what I like to do. And, um, Basically, you would take an extra firm tofu and cook it up with the same vegetables that you would in your egg scramble uh, and then flavor it with, I like to do nutritional yeast and uh, turmeric, but you can play with the spices and go in any direction you feel so inclined. Uh, and then with baking, I do a lot of baking and I like to use flax, flax meal with water for an egg replacer in things like cakes. Uh, but there are also others like applesauce and bananas. Banana has a potent taste, so you have to really want it to taste like banana. Uh, so there are alternatives. But what I have found in my experience, and I, I was not quick to be fully vegan and all about plant-based living. It was very slow and gradual for me. And what I found is by not trying to replace certain things and incorporating new dishes into my, my life, it made the transition a lot smoother and less disappointing when I wasn't achieving maybe the exact replica of eggs. So it became a less restrictive experience and one that instead was very, very abundant. I tried all of these different types of cuisines and different types of flavors. I didn't even realize how limited I was before. And it was a, a new world of food for me. Yeah, I don't think a lot of us, Tony, uh, actually do realize how limited our menus are. I think back to before I began eating a plant-based diet, even after I had lost a lot of the weight, you know, I still was eating very much the same thing day in and day out. And while that hasn't changed too terribly much for me, there is certainly still way more variety with the plant-based diet. Um, but I got to go back to the tofu scramble and nutritional yeast. Here's a little poll question that I like to do. Did you have any idea in the world what nutritional yeast was before you started eating a plant-based diet? I didn't. And that's something <laughs> I hear about all the time. They're like, yeast, that's weird. Uh, not understanding the difference between baking yeast and, uh, and nutritional yeast. But now I love it and um, I buy it in bulk. So it's a little bit cheaper. Yeah. You know, I remember the first time somebody asked me if I liked nooch and I was like, nooch. I looked at them like they had two heads. I was like, what, what nooch? Like, what, what, what are we talking about? Like, is this Jay and Silent Bob and you're talking Naga nooch? Like, I don't know what it is you're talking about right now. And then when they're like, mm, 
essentially patted me on the head and said, there, there, grasshopper, let me school you up. And they introduced me to it. And holy moly, is it not delicious? I mean, it's a versatile little seasoning tool, isn't it? Yes, my husband actually wants uh, to begin a campaign where we stop calling it nutritional yeast, which seems unappetizing, and move to Golden Flakes. There are a couple other names on the list, but Golden Flakes was at the top of it. Yo, <laughs> your husband is on to something. Like, okay, you know, when you get that petition going, let me sign it. I will be the first one to do it. I Man, Golden Flakes. Golden Flakes. I love it. Yeah. Because, yeah, like nutritionally, yes, that does. It, it sounds kind of weird, right? Uh huh. It is weird. I'm confusing. Like, Come on, be plant based, eat nutritional yeast. Like, what? what? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, so, we were talking about limited menus, eating the same things a lot. What I want to do here with the time that we have remaining, I got two things I want to, I want to do with you before I let you go here, because I know how limited your time is with this book coming out. Uh, number one, I want to ask you about, ways that you can make some of like the most popular foods in the standard American diet on the cheap, entirely plant-based. And the very top of that list, it always has to be, no matter what the diet is, pizza. So if you're making a pizza on a budget, 100% plant-based, how are you making it? I, okay. If you are strapped for time, then you can buy a, a, pre-made whole wheat crust. They have one at um, Trader Joe's for $2.29, I believe. Uh, or you can make it from scratch in my first plant-based on a budget cookbook. I have how to do it from scratch. It takes a little bit of time, but it is a lot cheaper. Uh, and then uh, we do pizza night at our house on a regular basis, and we each have our own personal pizzas. So I get them from Trader Joe's. And on mine, I like to do um, a pesto or a barbecue and not so much the red sauce with lots of vegetables. And I know I'm going to get a lot of grief for this, but I like pineapples on my pizza. It's just how it is. No grief. I yeah, love you. Okay. That is fantastic. Okay. Team pineapple as well. All right. So we're bonding over yep. pintos and pineapples. Exactly. All right. This is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with pineapple on a pizza. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. I agree. I like it. it. Yeah. Like, and, 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 you know, the blend of, of the tomato sauce with the sweetness of the pineapple, like it is a legit flavor country Delicious. experience in your mouth. It's so good. Delicious. Yep. So good. Uh, on my husband's pizza, he is much more strict, uh, eating whole foods plant-based than I am. So he would never ever put a vegan cheese or anything like that on his pizza and he'll always do a nutritional yeast and golden flakes. Golden <laughs> flakes. Sorry, sorry. Golden <laughs> flakes. Uh, he'll do golden flakes and uh lots of veg vegetables. And um sometimes you can even do something like baked tofu or soy curls if you want that protein experience. There you go. The protein. And that sounds like a band name. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the protein experience. <laughs> I watched that band. Yeah, right. I, I get a ticket. I go in the mosh pit. I don't know what a like a healthy whole food plant based mosh pit would look like. I'm sure it'd be much different than going to like Ozfest or something like that. I don't know. Uh, number two on the list, fries. I know that this is something that a lot of people love. They're going to have the burger. They're going to have the fries to go with it. In your cookbook here, you've got a phenomenal recipe for, matter of fact, like gourmet, I would say, sweet potato wedges. Tell us about those. Uh, yes, yeah, sweet potato fries are our go-to in our house. And another fact, I had never had a sweet potato until I became vegetarian and, and then vegan. I had never had a sweet potato or kale or brown rice or quinoa or a butternut squash. I know it's really, it's really wild. I had never had any of those. So uh, anyway, back to your question. Uh, <laughs> I, I purchased an air fryer. You don't have to purchase an air fryer, but it has been transformative in our kitchen and requires no oil or if you use oil a little tiny itty bitty bit like a spray uh and it is so easy and it tastes so delicious if you have 
it in your budget, I do recommend an air fryer. We were talking a little bit earlier about burritos and you have a just a slamming recipe for uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Modified. Uh, you can modify the sheet pan fajita recipe and oh, stuff yeah. that into a burrito. Mm -hmm. This fajita recipe that's in your book. I mean, I'm looking forward to maybe making this tonight as a matter of fact. Is this another go to for you? Yes. What I like about the, the, the fajita recipe is that people often think about it as a meat dish, but it doesn't have to be. And in fact, we use protein, uh, sorry, tofu as our protein. And I like to break the extra firm tofu after it's been pressed uh, into chunks by ripping them off so that they're not in a uniform, um, cut in a uniform pattern. And it feels more meaty that way. And I flavor them in the same way my parents used to flavor our meat version so you can use your own taco seasoning blend uh but or you can buy a no sodium or low sodium um taco seasoning packet for like 50 cents and it is very very good and low time effort and uh you know the super bowl just passed a lot of people had these big parties last month with that Front and center at a lot of these parties is a big old plate of nachos. And obviously you eat these things year round. Doesn't just have to be at the Super Bowl. You also have some banging nacho recipes in the book, right? Yes, I am a big fan of dumping a bunch of stuff on other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I like to uh, do as many sheet pan or uh, casserole dishes. There's a, a section in Plant-Based on a Budget Quick and Easy that is for sheet pan and casserole. And you basically just start with your, your um, tortilla chips and add whatever you want on there. And first, you can, you can um, bake them with the topping of your choice, like cheese, vegan cheese, uh, and then add everything else on later. Or if you like a little bit of crisp to your beans, which I do, I bake those on as well. All right. And uh, let's, uh, the last recipe I want to ask you about, got to do dessert here. We talked a lot about the, the main dishes and the appetizers here, but we haven't gotten to dessert yet. Ice cream. You can never go wrong with mm -hmm. ice cream. What ice cream recipes do you have in the book? I have three different banana-based nice cream uh, options. One is chocolate, one is strawberry, and then one is plain, like vanilla style. And it is my favorite thing to eat. It is so healthy. It helps me um, use up my spotted brown bananas when I toss them in the freezer. Also, if anybody is listening to this and has not frozen their bananas and I'm sure everybody has, but just in case you were like me, the very first time I tried to freeze my bananas, I put them in the freezer with their peelings on because I had heard, oh, that's how you, um, that's how you save your bananas. Just toss them in the freezer. Uh, it's very, very hard to remove the peeling immediately after, uh, freezing them. So peel them before and it'll make your life easier to make these banana ice cream recipes. No doubt about it. And uh, if you're going to eat the banana by itself, are you somebody who likes it on the greener side or do you like it more yellow with a couple spots on there? Oh, I'm a, I'm definitely probably the first day it's fully yellow. First. Oh, oh so you're precise. You're like just waiting. You're like yes. staring at the counter. You check it every morning. It's like, nope. <laughs> Nope. Yeah. Nope. Yes. Let's do this thing. I'm the same awesome. way with my avocados. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to bring you back. Day. We're going to talk just about avocados. Uh, love me some avos. Uh, two more quick things. Um, ice cream aside, obviously that's a frozen thing, but a lot of the recipes in your book, if not all of them, you say you can also freeze yourself and reheat them. So I would think like with something like the fajitas that we were talking about, that would be kind of difficult to freeze, but you've got this down to a science where you can freeze it, save all the flavors, reheat it and save time. Uh, yes. I, with the recipe testing process was, a, I would tr just try it out, see how it worked. And almost everything works. Even the breakfast burritos, you can package them individually and thaw them out, reheat them. And they're delicious as well as those fajitas. 
All right. And the last thing I want to do with you here is, is challenge you. You were talking about being able to feed yourself for $35 for the entire week. Well, I'm going to give you $50 here. And what are you going to put in your cart that could actually feed two people for an entire week? Is that possible? Definitely possible. And I've done it. And I have videos of, of me doing it, showing my receipt at places like both Walmart and Whole Foods. So depending on where you shop, I've got you covered. I would do things that are going to be really versatile so that when you go to the grocery store, you can see what the cheaper options are like chilies, soups, curries. Those are all very inexpensive and will allow you to swap out ingredients once you're at the grocery store to see what works. But the base of my soup, we'll say soup, um, will be carrots, some celery, onion, garlic, uh, as many vegetables as I can find within my budget. For breakfast, I'm going to go for oats and fruit with some bulk flax meal and any other things um, that I can find that are affordable, like uh, unsalted raw um, sunflower seeds. That's usually something that I like to put in mine. If you have it within your budget to go for a more expensive nut or seed, feel free to do that. But if we're keeping it under $50, I'm going to do the uh, raw sunflower seeds. For lunch, I'm going to go with something like a full salad using um, some probably romaine, that's my favorite, or kale or spinach if you want, uh, with a cucumber, some bell pepper, some tomato, onion, and I'll throw together um, a balsamic vinaigrette for a dressing. You've got this down to a science. It's very clear that you have this down to a science. And that's why this book is so fantastic. 100 fast, healthy meal prep, freezer friendly, and one pot vegan recipes can be yours in Tony's new book, Plant Based on a Budget, Quick and Easy. There's a link to pick up your copy right now in the show description or in the episode notes. Tony Okamoto, thank you so very much for being here. This has just been a real treat and long overdue having you on the show. Thank you so much. Again, I'm really honored and I appreciate all the good you do in the world. If your health IQ was a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.